Moving on to section three. So this is section three. This is the um, operating systems and networks part. The only problem with this section is there's a lot of stuff to learn and it's only 30 marks they could give you. So they could ask you anything from anywhere and you just have to be able to answer it. There's a lot that they could ask you, but let's go. The two advantages and one is the advantage of using fiber optics as a transmission medium. Two advantages. Um, speed. Hey, they just asked it to state here, so we're not going to try to write a, a thesis for them. Okay? I just say. Um, speed and higher bandwidth. Yep, that's all. I'm not going to... Okay, we'll go with longer distance. Honorable mention goes to longer distance, right? But speed and higher transmission bandwidth, usually higher. The disadvantage, it's very fragile. That's all. Okay, let's add in one extra um difficult to repair all right okay okay and if you want to fight to take it for cost or something yeah briefly this guy three layers of the osi model oh my goodness six marks two marks for each i am not going to describe every layer of the osi model actually i'm going to okay we're starting from the bottom please do not Touch Steve's pet alligator. Physical. Data link. Network. Transport. Session. Um, presentation. Application. <sighs> you know, you could like Google this, eh? But because I needed to understand how the, what, the, what the answers they're looking for. They're giving you one mark for saying physical. For sure. What do you need to say about physical? It's responsible for the converting electrical signals to ones and zeros. Data link is responsible for giving a MAC address. Sign in a MAC address or synchronizing slash synchronizing packets. I given you all the low hanging fruit answers, the easiest answers. If you want to answer this, answer this in in any way, you can do that. Network layer, network layer. It um, assigns an IP address. Um, routes packets. Yeah. Transport. Transport. It breaks it up and set breaks packets into segments. Mm, yeah. Breaks up into segments to be transported. Breaks up slash reassembles. Session layer. Again, tired already. Session layer is for uh, checks for user user authentication. User authentication last synchronization yeah presentation layer usually deals with encryption or compression of data da, 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 da. application application layer is um uh, makes the data meaningful makes data meaningful to desired application, desired user application. Right. Now these could go a lot more in depth, but the question says briefly describe any one of them. So all I did was pick out one thing that they do and you choose any three and you should be able to briefly describe um, um, some sort of explanation of what it does. So I said it does converting. So usually like, um, Words, actions. So the action the physical layer is to convert electrical signals. It assigns, it assigns, breaks up, authenticates, it encrypts the data, makes something. Yeah. If they ask you in detail about the physical um part of the OSI model, you'll have to say a lot more. Things like um defines a speed responsible for the transmission of the raw data. Words along the lines of bits and bytes and all that stuff, but they didn't ask you for 
a description of everything that the physical layer does. They just ask you, just briefly describe it. So these should be good. Any three of them should good be okay because you need to give a clear, um, you need to give the OSI model and then the other. You need to give the part of the OSI model because they need to show that you have the, the um, that you know the OSI model and then you need to give the, the breakdown. That's a lot of space for that six marks. Students would have probably gone hard and explained as much as they could and then realize you only get two marks for each one of them. In addition to other devices, a computer laboratory contains a silver network attached storage NAS to computers, a route, and a printer. Draw a fully labeled diagram to show how the devices will be connected to form a simple network to access the internet. Alright, six marks. When you're accessing the internet, you need to have the, the ISP. ISP sends the information into your modem. The modem is then checked by a firewall. Firewall always connects to a router. You never go wrong by having um, those three. You must have those. That is, that's the basis of any network, no matter where you go, right? So from here, your router usually connects to a switch. The switch is the point that's going to distribute all the stuff. And we need to connect this to what? Silver. No, it's two computers, a router and a printer. Well, we have the router already. That's kind of weird. Okay. All right, so let's go with the two computers first. We'll call this PC. And we'll call this PC. All right, two computers. After the two computers, you have a printer. Low hanging fruit. I don't know how to draw a printer, so I'll just draw a box like that. I need a printer. Nobody has time to draw a whole printer. Like, why would you do that? Then you have your network at attached storage. We'll do it like this. Nah, it's network attached storage, not the wrapper. And then we'll call this the silver. Boom. Mm. Yeah. How they usually mark this is they'll check to see if you have the things connected properly. This is six marks. I'm, I'm guessing you'll get one mark for, two marks for all the devices here. And then one, two, three, four. A switch will have to be a central point. Your router can be the central point. Students tend to make the mistake of making your router the central point and let the router send all the um, stuff. But um, really and truly, a switch is the one that sends all the items. A router does all the thinking. So make sure the router is left by itself to do the thinking and the switch will do the other stuff. Yeah. So you must have the switch after the router. Firewall must be between the modem and the router. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it must come, come back to the ISP because it has to connect to the internet. Yeah, six marks. Briefly describe the role of the device drivers in our operating system. Um, they act as a translator, translator between a peripheral device and the operating system, ensuring that communication of instructions Last requests can take place efficiently. Du, 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 du. Program A is currently running. It needs to retrieve data from a disk F1 interrupt is generated. Briefly explain how an interrupt is handled by the processor. Whoa, there are interrupts? No, there's no, there's no pulling and um, pulling and interrupting. The, okay, for three marks, the, Interrupt is sent to the CPU. It pauses the current process and sends it to the interrupt holder. The interrupt request is handled to completion, then the paused process paused is resumed and the regular cycle continues. Ta-da! Why would I put exclamation mark? Wow, I'm sorry, didn't need to buy exclamation mark. My bad. Um, yeah, there's, there's a kind of interrupt manager kind of thing that holds it in place because it can't go back to the queue it will it will um 
they will end up going behind things that were there before so we don't have to go back to it here briefly explain how the wrong robin shedding and algorithm works oh my goodness i hate right sorry i love to write i really do enjoy writing a lot for an examination each process is given a quantum of time to run in the processor the process the process at the front of the queue at the front of the queue is Q U E U E Q E U E is sent for processing is, is executed for the set time when the time is up it is this is where you can try, sprinkle all the salt in it it is preemptively moved preemptively t-i-v-e-l-i yeah moved to the um end of the queue and another process is executed for the set quantum of time this repeats indefinitely yeah it just keeps going right cool three marks no problems there i so want to finish this paper i feel like i'll say now here for like a for two hours but i've only been sitting on here for like an hour and 15 minutes the following is the scheme of a database for keeping track of a salesperson. Oh, this is the thing where they put in um where they put in SQL in computer science now. And honestly, I'm not too sure why they put they're putting this SQL inside here. Because why would you put SQL in module 3? This is about operating systems and networking. Where SQL come inside? Why why put databases inside here? Like you could have put the databases in module 2. Because that's better suited there because that's like software engineering you have to create databases you might have to do some code or something like that but this question i don't know why sql exists in here but somebody saw it fit to do that so we have to answer the question i cannot teach you sql right now sql is so easy to learn that it's also very easy to forget that sometimes i and all when i see the question i'll be like what how do you do sql again because it's so easy to forget but <clears throat> What do you want us to do for seven marks? Seven marks, eh? Like, imagine the amount of weight that SQL has in this, out of the 30 marks, seven of the marks is the SQL question. When you have things from operating systems, memory management, process management, device management, boot, the boot process, um, user interface, input, output, all sorts of other things they could ask about operating systems and networks that will be very beneficial. But then you get a whole seven mark question about SQL. Okay, so it's a database. We have custom ID as the primary key here, first name, last name, address, and salesperson ID. So salesperson ID clearly relates to uh, salesperson ID here. This is why you're doing IT, yeah? but you know. So salesperson ID is clearly the relationship here. This is a one to many relationship, my bad. One to many here. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's the one to many there. Yeah? Um, go create an SQL query to display all the customers along with the salesperson who served from them from the location in St. Lucia. Okay, <clears throat> okay, let me take it seriously. All the customers along with the salesperson, so you want to get the customers along with the salesperson. So that means you want to get the customer information, but you also want the information from here. So you have two tables, so that means you have to join it. There's this thing called inner join, which confuses the hell out of everybody. But that's all right. So we're going to say select. Select, we want the customer table. Um, we want the customer name, customer first name, customer last name. We really need any more information, right? And we want, along with the salespersons who serve them. So we want the salesperson's table, salesperson dot first name, and salesperson dot last name. All right, so that deals with the part there where we want to get what we want, right? To display all the things. So we have the select part. 
Now, because we're using two tables, they have to be joined to each other. So we have to say from, normally it would just say one table because there's only one table you're searching from. But if you're searching from two tables, you have to join those two tables manually. So now you're going to have to say from customer and then you have to put in the inner join and make the, make the relationship on the fly. Inner join customer table to the salesperson table and inner join has to follow on. So inner join on what? We want to join the two IDs. So the same relationship that I have straight here, salesperson ID to salesperson ID. Yeah. You want to start from the um, foreign key to the primary key. So you're going from customer dot salesperson ID and then you have to put equal sign. There are other ways to do it. Right? You don't have to always put equal sign, but I can't remember the other way to do it. But the yeah, same thing. Customer salesperson, which is the foreign key to the primary key, salesperson dot salesperson ID. And right, so now we've made the join and say where are we taking it from. We're taking it from two tables that are joined to each other, the customer table that is joined to the salesperson table based on the salesperson ID on either table, always from the foreign to the primary. And then where, what do we want to look for? Where, um, location. All right, location only exists in salesperson. So salesperson dot location is equal to double quotes or single quotes, boy? I think it's single quotes. Thank you, Lucia. Yeah. Now, are they going to kill you for semicolons and all of those other things? I don't think so, but usually they end up with a semicolon. The whole select from where is end up with a semicolon. Sometimes they might have to put in brackets for certain things. Um, usually they might have to put commas and whatnot. But I don't think they, they I don't think they're fighting you too much for that. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So your biggest problem here is to remember that when you're doing the join, you have to say inner join. Don't forget the on. You have to say inner join on. So your keywords, that's why I put it in the capital letters. Again, I don't agree with a seven mark SQL question, but they put it in the syllabus, so we have to learn it. And there you have it. That is the end. Uh, yeah, so I completed this whole thing in an hour and a half. You can too. But remember to check over your work because as you saw, I made some mistakes in some of the questions and I just kind of rushed through, rushed through it, which is basically the same thing that you will do, which is why I do the videos to show you how it feels. So I know the pain to do it, except I'm not in an exam room with weird invigilators staring at you. I just stop talking now. Enjoy. I hope you get it correct. And if you get this for your mock exam, and you do the question and then you go to your mock exam and you make it look like you knew the answer because you watch my video. <laughs> that sucks, doesn't it? I hope you feel smart at the end. Bye-bye. <laughs> Don't forget to download the app, yeah. So chances are it's late in the night and you're watching this past paper video hoping that you get the answers to the past paper that you've been looking for for all this time and you're happy that it actually exists on YouTube. Well, go leave it up to the YouTube algorithm to show you the rest of um, answers. I have an app that's called Learn It by Make It Simple TT and it has all the past paper answers in chronological order for the past 10 years, maybe 12, depending on the time that you're watching this video, it might have a lot more. The app is called Learn It. Go find it, download it, link will be in the description. And if you want to see the PDF with the actual crap of what handwriting that I have with the answers, so you could actually scroll through the PDF and look at the answers as it was written. Instead of watching the video, hey, you could do that too. Download the app now. All right, back to the answers.